And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another round of sound. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. Bob Pompiani here, manning the controls. We have a lot to get into. We'll talk about the Penguins' big win in Washington. What do they do at the trade deadline? What about the goalie situation? What are the Pirates doing? Is it a rebuild or not? We'll get into all that. But the number one topic tonight on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown will be the Super Bowl. And Kansas City wins one for the first time in 50 years. Here's your panel left to right on your television screen. We have with us tonight Andrew Filipponi from the PM show on the fan every day from 2 until 6. In the middle, it's Will Graves, outstanding journalist with the Associated Press. And to the right, Jason Mackey, great beat writer with the Pirates and the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, although he wears many other hats as well. <laughs> we'll get into the Super Bowl to start here, gentlemen. And, Pony, I'll start with you. Your take on Kansas City winning the way they did, which was another come from behind win. And they do it because they've got a quarterback, Bob, that, look, I mean, what can be said about this guy? He can make every throw. I thought there was a chance he might have some Dan Marino growing pains where he puts up huge individual numbers but doesn't have the team success necessarily. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm now to a point or to a place uh, where I feel like it's going to be very difficult now where almost the torch, guys, has been passed from Brady and the Patriots in that dynasty to maybe Kansas City, Andy Reid, and Patrick Mahomes. You know, hard not to agree with you there, Pony, when you look, especially when you look at the age of the skill position guys that the Chiefs have, how young Mahomes is, Hill, Kelsey, I mean, those guys, Hardman, I mean, those guys, Williams, those guys are young and they're going to be good for a while if they can find a way to make the math work. Uh, to me, I'll be honest with you, the first 50 minutes went the way I kind of feared it would go. I mean, I thought the, the 49ers controlled it with the run game. Mm -hmm. their, for, their front four destroyed the Chiefs' offensive line. It looked like, it looked like every single player was Debo against Eric Fisher. It was like Debo, it was like four Debo's across the front and just abusing them. He had no time to throw for 10 minutes, for 50 minutes. He hits that one pass to Hill, and it's like the Niners just took the win out of the Niners, and they were cooked. It was stunning. You guys want the player route. I'll go the coach route. Andy Reid in this one, I thought it was an interesting thing for his career arc. I think we're going to hear a lot about Andy Reid in the Hall of Fame. We'll probably hear a lot about, you know, Mike Tomlin in the Hall of Fame and Bill Cowher in the Hall of Fame and so-and-so in the Hall of Fame. But uh, Andy Reid, I was happy to see him get one. Um, everything that we see on this side, he looks like a quality individual. Obviously had a lot of success in the regular season. It was cool to see him get it done in the playoffs. I did like the post-game interview with he and Patrick Mahomes there. That was kind of neat. Uh, but talk about a guy that finally deserves to win one. It's just I'm curious where this puts him sort of in the NFL hierarchy at this point with coaches. All right, let's talk about I thought the biggest play of the game was a third and 15. Seven minutes left in the game. Kansas City with the ball. They're down 20 to 10. Third and 15 after Tyreek Hill gets a what they thought was a pass completion overturned by replay. Uh, Will Graves, that turned into a 44-yard completion out of nowhere. He was wide open, and all of a sudden, Shanahan's team's thinking about what happened when he was offensive coordinator with Atlanta. Yeah, and right, and I mean, another part, too, I mean, good coaching and smart play calling. Let's remember, so they, they get to within a field goal, they get the ball back. First play of that next drive is a little short little pass to, uh, to Hill, four or five yards. He gets tackled by uh, Sherman, the next play, and Sherman looked a little gassed because tackling Hill is hard. The next play, literally Watkins ran right by him for 40-some yards, and they were in front after that. Uh, but if we're going to talk about coaching, one thing, Kyle Shanahan, pretty good coach, hate the flat brim look, but seriously, <laughs> at the end of the first half, you're getting the ball to start the second half. I agree. You make, it's, you make them punt. There's a minute 40 on the clock. You have three timeouts, and you let it run, and then you call two running plays. I don't care about the ticky-tack pass interference call against Kittle. The fact that they were, should not even have been in that position. Play to win the game. I mean, yep. Belichick must have had a coronary watching. Uh, well, it, it was Tomlin-esque. I mean, how many times do we see Tomlin in the last two minutes of a half of the game where he's using timeouts on the wrong side of the two-minute warning or he's letting too much clock run? And that's what it was reminiscent of. I had a lot of kind of acid flashbacks, guys. I wasn't doing drugs. Uh, but I, I was thinking about some of these co coaching points with the Steelers. All the motion and all the things that both of these offensive coaches did in this game, where are those, where are those components in the Steelers' offense? You know, if this team now, if the excuse last season was, well, they didn't have Ben Roethlisberger, are they going to move into the 21st century? Are they going to get to 2020 here and start to put some of these ingredients in that made Kansas City and San Francisco great players, but also, I think, great concepts, Jason, offensively? No, I agree with you, and I think there's zero excuse if Ben comes back and Ben is 100% for Randy Feichter to not have the, the, I almost said the Pirates offense, the Steelers offense operating the way Kansas City is. I mean, Ben mm -hmm. is capable. They have capable 
wide receivers on the outside, you would think the offensive line has a better year. Um, but I agree with you. They, they have to modernize their offense. The only reason I'm, I'm sort of okay with it, I don't think Mason Rudolph or Duck Hodges would be able to handle anything near what Patrick Mahomes or Ben Roethlisberger can. Let's well, talk he, about another thing. Well, you brought up the fact that, uh, that you left too much, you know, just let the clock run at the end of the first half, and I agree with that. But also after that, 44-yard uh, touchdown and, or completion that set up the touchdown. They get the ball back, and San Francisco goes against what they like to do with the lead, which is run the ball. Were you surprised by I mean, that? They threw it uh, once, and then they ran it, uh, or they ran it once, and they threw it twice. Well, they've been in, they've been a pretty effective. I mean, one one of the most effective play action teams, all all you know, in the league all year. I mean, even that dates back from Hector when Shanahan was coaching RG3 with the Redskins seven or eight years ago. I mean, he's always been good at sort of using the run to set up the pass. I don't. The, the way their line had controlled the game at that point, I was a little surprised. But at the same time, I mean, it wasn't like he, he was heaving it 50 yards downfield, although I did think this was weird, and this is not that, that sequence. But I thought Emmanuel Sanders sort of pulled up on that pass downfield in the last, what, minute and a half of the game. Yeah. That was a little weird. He was overthrown, but it's the Super Bowl. There's a minute and a half left. You're trailing. I'm glad Manny's got a Super Bowl ring with the Broncos, but that was a little odd call. But I'm not going to go ticky-tack on what they did after they got the lead. Uh, I think we saw a coach that wanted the quarterback to be, the, to, be, to be the hero. And I think part of it was maybe Shanahan was kicking himself with the timeout stuff at the end of the first half that we're talking about and trying to put Garoppolo in a situation where you still have timeouts, you're still on the plus side of the two-minute warning, you've been the second-best run offense in the NFL all year, you have gotten to a point in the game where you're leading, they, they got up 10 points, guys, because of what Moster and what Coleman were able to do I would have made the Chiefs stop the run and, and then put Garoppolo in a situation where he absolutely had to throw the ball. And if he doesn't make the plays then, then fine. Uh, but I'm going to live by the sword and die by the sword. And that's guys like Mostert and Coleman for me. How are you guys anti-flat brim hat, by the way? Because he's 40 years old, Jason. He's 40 years old. Oh, if you're 40, years. you can't I'm 40, wear it? I'm 45. I will I mean, Bob, will you me, wear this, a flat brim hat? This is a sake. My, my kid is 10. He wears a flat brim hat. It's fine. Bob, would 40 you? 40 years old. I have Grow one. up a little. <laughs> I'm not going to wear one. No. How about a backwards Fun? cap, Bob? No, that's also. That, I mean, there's a little bit of bend to it. It's, it's not totally no, it's, flat it's brim. Place, I mean, Will, flat, of, all the, of all the fashion <laughs> statements got, that got made in the Super Bowl tonight, that's your biggest gripe. Well, that's been no, a year no, thing. it's not. Yeah. Uh, he's I, had, that's been Shanahan's look for years. It's just, I mean, it's <laughs> awful. I mean, just bend the baby a little, just a little bit. Be a little grown bit. up. It's hard to bend that thing. It goes right back to where it was. It's like a shelf. And I've never seen a cap with a smaller logo. You need, you need yeah, a magnifying that was a little glass weird. to see it. All right, real quick, uh, before we end this segment, uh, Andrew, I want to get your take on the Chiefs. Are they now the team to beat moving into next year? They got Mahomes back, and, it, and you know they're going to sign him long term. They're going to give him what he wants. With him at quarterback, is there a shift now from New England to Kansas City? Well, I think the one – yeah, I'm going to say yes, and here's a big reason why. I like that Andy Reid, offensive coach, that's never been a problem for him. Um, even with Alex Smith and Kevin Cobb and Donovan McNabb, now he's got the best quarterback in the league. He found a good defensive coordinator. Okay, he brought in Steve Spagnuolo, who helped the Giants beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. And that's something I wish Mike Tomlin did. You know, he's a defensive coach. Get a bona fide offensive coordinator with, with some credentials. And I think that makes Kansas City a balanced team. They're better defensively than I thought, Bob. Uh, Pop, I would just say it's not just the Chiefs. I mean, I think it's literally, we look at the age of the guys with the Ravens. I mean, look at Lamar Jackson. I mean, you'll even look at Tannehill, look at Deshaun Watson. It is a generational shift. The young guys have taken over. And if I'm the Steelers, I'm watching the playoffs, and I'm thinking, Do, can we really do this with the 38-year-old guy next year? All right, we're going to have more coming up here. But before we go in this segment, I want to remind you, it's exciting when a team moves into a new building. That's certainly true with the team at number one Cochran Hyundai South Hills and their spacious new facility, even though they only move less than a mile up the street. Right now, for a limited time, you get special grand opening offers on both sales and service. It's the new number one Cochran Hyundai South Hills, now conveniently located at 3220 West Liberty Avenue. So check them out. And when we come back, We'll talk about the Penguins in a big win today in Washington next. The number one Cochrane Sports Showdown is brought to you by number one Cochrane. Go one better. And by Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. Have a greater hand in your health. 